This video will step you through developing a simple model using the MicroSaint Sharp Discrete Simulation Tool. MicroSaint Sharp is a commercially available general purpose discrete event simulation software tool that was first introduced commercially in 1984. Since then, the tool has undergone many changes and enhancements. MicroSaint Sharp's intuitive graphical user interface and flowchart approach to modeling make it a tool that can be used by generalists as well as simulation experts. MicroSaint has proven to be an invaluable asset in both small businesses and Fortune 500 companies, and in many areas including manufacturing, the military, human factors, healthcare, and the service industry. Do you want to know where the name came from? SAINT stands for Systems Analysis of Integrated Networks of Tasks. The micro part came from an early contract to redevelop SAINT as a microcomputer tool. The sharp portion came from the tool redesigned to use the C-sharp language. The tool has a long history of being in the forefront of computer simulation. MicroSaint Sharp is a robust, full-featured tool. This slide shows just a parcel list of some of its features, such as 2D and 3D animation, optimization, input-output communication capabilities, free runtime export. It can compete or outperform any tool on the market. What I'm going to illustrate today is how to develop a simple model of a bank. The simulation question is, how many bank tellers do we need to ensure that customers do not have to wait too long, while ensuring that the tellers are utilized? Now let's go to MicroSaint Sharp. This is what you see when you first open MicroSaint Sharp. You will notice it's a fairly standard Windows application. By default, there is a menu bar, a toolbar, a tree view, a message bar, properties window, descriptor window area, and output window. The environment is user configurable. You can move, resize, hide, and unhide various components as you desire. The start page is by default shown in the middle. We want to start a new analysis, so I will just click the new icon up here on the toolbar. Notice the start page closed and I have a blank slate for defining my model. I will now create two tasks by right clicking in the network and selecting one of the options in the menu. The first task I will create re will represent customers arriving, so I will select specialized task of add entity generator so it can generate those customers. The second task will represent the customer being served, so I will add a regular task. To link the task together, to move the task, I just grab it and move it. To draw a path, I start at the um, first task. My cursor changes to a pointer, and I simply draw a line to the second one. Now I have my two-node model. Now I need to add task information. To open the task description window, just double-click on any, any node. So I'm going to double-click on the first node here. Now I'm going to enter a name. The name of this one is Customer Arrives. Notice there are four tabs below the name, Main, Timing, Paths, and Appearance and Notes. This is a specialized entity generator task that will generate entities based on the rules supplied by the user in the Main tab. In this case, we want to, this task to generate customers for an eight hour day, or from time zero to time 480 minutes. So I'm going to change the repeat type here from run to count to run to time, and then I'm going to enter 480 in the repeat duration field. Notice that by default, the code entity.tag++ is in the code field. This ensures that each customer generated is unique and has a unique tag value, so I'm going to leave that as is. Now we will go to the timing tab. As the name suggests, this is where you will set how often the task occurs. For a typical bank, the arrival rate of customers will vary depending on the time of day. And during lunch, the arrival rate was increased. So I'm going to use a variable named arrival rate as the mean time value for this task. So I'm going to change where it says return zero to return arrival rate, keeping the semicolon there. Then I'm going to select that word. Oops, I typed it wrong. So I'm going to select that word, right click, and I can go down here and say add selected to variable list, and I'm going to add it as a floating point since it's going to represent time. Now it's going to take that word and enter it over here into my tree view under the variables. So it's now added to the variable list. Now I'm going to also change the distribution from normal to exponential just by picking a uh, it from this drop list here. The next tab over here is paths and this shows me that my um, path, I have one path and it's going to go from this task to task 2. 
I can close the task description window by just clicking the X up in the upper window. Now I've got my first task and it kind of overlaps my second one so I'm just going to grab it and move it over here. So now I've got my first task defined. Let's open task 2 by double clicking on it. Then we'll enter the name serve customer. We only want this task to execute if a teller is available. So we're going to use our release condition. And in this code block here is where we enter code that says what has to be true for this task to execute. And in our case, a teller has to be available. So we're going to create a new variable called tellers. And we're going to say that you have to have one, at least you have to have a greater than zero for this task to execute. Or this release condition says return tellers greater than zero. Then the beginning effect says what happens when this task starts. So in our case, we're going to decrement the number of tellers available whenever this task starts. And then once the task ends, when we're done serving the customer, we're going to make that teller available for the next customer. So we're going to say tellers plus plus, semicolon. So now here in our release condition, it says the tellers has to be greater than zero. At the beginning effect, we're going to decrement the number available. And at the ending effect, we're going to make more available. Now we need to create that variable. So I'm going to go over here to variables and say add variable. I'm going to give the name of tellers, and I'm going to say OK. It's going to add it down here. Now notice the property grid here is updated with that. And the initial value is initially set to 0. I'm going to make that 2. So now we've got tellers 2. So at the beginning of our model, it's going to come in here, test this release condition. It's 2. So is that greater than 0? Yes, it is. Let the task release. Go to the beginning effect. Decrement it by 1. We'll have one teller. And after this task is complete, we increment it again, and we'll have two left. So now we've done um, our coding for releasing with the tellers. Now we're going to go to the timing tab. And this task is going to have a gamma distribution with a mean time of 6. So I'm going to put 6 in there and a standard deviation of 2. Now we're going to go to the Q tab. In a bank, customers are served in a first-in, first-out fashion. So I'm going to change this queue type from none to FIFO, first-in, first-out. Now I can go ahead and close this task. As you can see, I now have a customer arrives, followed by a serve customers. And my serve customers has a queue in front, which is a FIFO, as indicated by the F in the square in the front of the box. Now we need to set up the customer arrival rates. We want an initial rate in the morning, a faster lunch rate, and then a rate after the lunch rush. In Microsaint, we use events that are called scenario events. These happen at specific times in the model. To add a new event, I'll go over to my tree view, right click on a scenario event, say add scenario event. Notice a new one gets added there. I'm going to double click on it to open it. In this first one, I'm going to call initialize. going to happen at time 0, and I'm going to set my arrival rate equal to 3. Okay, so I'm going to close that, and I'm going to add another scenario event. Double click on that one. I'm going to have this one happen. I'm going to call this one lunch, lunch rush. And I'm going to have that happen at time 180, which will be three hours after opening. And then I'm going to set arrival rate equal to 2. So I'm going to have a customer come in about every two minutes. Okay, and then I need to reset it get after lunch, so I'm going to add get another one. This one's going to say um, rush over. I'm going to set the arrival, and that's going to be at time 2.40. And I'm going to set the arrival rate back to 3. And go ahead and close that. So now I've got three different scenario events. Initialize happens at time 0. Lunch rush happens at time 180. And rush over ha happens at time 2.40. And it resets the customer arrival rate.
I now have a simple two-node model with different customer arrival rates. Let's save the model as bank.saint. Okay, now before we run it, let's check the syntax. So we go up here and click the little check mark on the toolbar. And down here in the output window, it says the code generation was complete. There's no hours, errors found, and it was created successfully. If there was an error, it would be displayed here. Let's, for example, let's open up our serve customer. Let's say I added another code, code here with a new variable, but I didn't define that into my variable list. Now if I go through, if I close that and I check my syntax again, it's going to come down and it's going to tell me that there's an error there. There was a uh, new variable and it expected a semicolon. It also doesn't know what it is. So now if I click on that error, it's going to take me right where it was and underline it. So it tells me where the error was and then I can go right to it. Okay, now I've deleted that. Let's check it again. Okay, no errors found. So let's go ahead and run the model. I just click the Begin Simulation tool on the toolbar. Okay, that ran pretty darn quick. It went to 485 and took 7.5 real-time seconds. So now let's try and slow it down a little bit. We're going to single step. So either I can click the single step up here or I can hit Control T. And then as I go, I can see the task network update. I can see customers arriving. I can see them being served. I'm just keeping hitting Control T here. And then notice down here in the corner is the clock value, so I can watch the clock as it goes. So we're now at time 30 minutes, so bank's been open for about a half hour. And now my queue's starting to build up. I've now got three people in my queue and two people getting served. So as I keep going, I've now got five people in my queue. So that means I've got five people waiting in line. So if I keep kind of stepping through here, I can see I'm you know kind of about five. Oh, I had six people there. And I think it's about 180 is when we start getting even more. So now my queue's starting to build up. I've got nine people, 10, 11. So I can notice that my queue's starting to get pretty big. Now I haven't even gotten to the lunch rush yet. So at time 180, now I'm into my lunch rush. I've now got 15 people there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish running it. I'm just going to hit Control G to finish it. So, um, so I can see that my queue was built up just by watching that. We already know by just watching the model that the queue got pretty long. But let's look at the reports and see what they tell us. In Microsaint, the reports are stored under something called snapshots. So if I go back to my tree view and I expand that snapshots node, I can see the built-in reports. Let's look at the queue data collection. So to look at that, I'm just going to right-click it and then say Show Result Data. And that's going to open my queue. So I can come in here and I can see my maximum queue length was about 19th and the um, maximum queue weight at this time that was the mean was 28 the maximum was 58.5 so somebody had to wait in line almost a full hour that seems a little bit long I don't think my bank customers would be too happy about that so I'm going to close that now let's go back and change our tellers. And now instead of having two tellers, let's make something like five. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. I'm going to run the model again. Okay, it's already done. So let's go back and look at our queue data collection this time. And this time, let's see, our maximum queue length was three, and our maximum queue weight was only 2.4. So that's not bad. I think, you know, our customers wouldn't wouldn't mind waiting two and a half minutes. So now I can either keep going back and changing the number of tellers and looking at that result, or I can use it use some built-in um, functionality in Microsoft that helps us. I can use either the experimenter down here or I can add um, use the OptQuest optimizer. Let's go ahead and use the experimenter. So to add a new experiment, I right click say add an experiment and I add the new one below there let's open that up so our first experiment we're going to add our input is going to be tellers 
So we'll go pick that. We have to have a minimum of one. So if we had zero, we're going to have people waiting forever. And let's have a maximum of, um, I don't know, 10. And with a step of one. And then we can tell it how many times we want to replicate this experiment. Let's go ahead and set it up to five. So that means it's going to run it five times for each input variable. And then what do we want for output? For outputs, we want to know how long the simulation runs. So let's pick clock. So I'll pick clock there. So now I have a new experiment. I'm going to save my model. So if I go over here and I say under experiment menu, I say run. It's going to go ahead and say ask me which one. I'm going to run it. Microsaint quickly went through and ran through all possibilities of tellers and ran each one five times. So if I look, if I only have one teller here, it ran five times. And it took anywhere from 928 minutes to about uh, 1191. So that took a really long time. If my bank, bank was only open for 480 minutes, and it took twice that long to get through all the customers. So I know one isn't very good. Let's see, let's look at two. Two is a little bit better. My bank closed at 480 on one of these. It got done at 485. So that's not too bad. Let's look at number three here. So those are actually a little bit less. My three tellers are pretty good. If I get to four tellers, everybody's done. I was able to close the bank within 10 minutes after it closed. But after this, once I get past four here, I'm not getting much return on my investment. So adding more tellers isn't giving me much time. So that's telling me that I probably only need somewhere between three and four tellers and um, I'm not going to have too big of a queue. So there we go. We've got a simple model with a bank, with customers arriving and serving with different di rates during the day, and we've used Experimenter to look at all of the possible values of some of our input and output variables. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I wish you happy modeling. You can download a demo version from www.microsaintsharp.com or send any questions to microsaintsharp at alliancescience.com.